Hi students, I am Nirmala, teaching in Bharadasana Metric Higher Secondary School, going to teach you a second lesson from your science subject, digestive system. So what is digestive system? Digestion, what is digestion? So we eat different variety of food, right? So the food that we eat need to be broken down into smaller particles. So you may be eating in a bigger substances like carbohydrates. The carbohydrates has to be broken down into glucose. The same way fats into fatty acids, proteins into amino acids. Then only our blood will absorb the nutrients, right? So we need to break that bigger particles into smaller particles. So that is called digestion, right? So that the food, once we eat the food, what happens? So, the food, the digestion process, so the process of uh, breaking down of food into simpler substance is called digestion. So, many organs work together to digest the food, right? So, there are many organs that work together to digest the food. Right? So, these organs form a system called digestive system. These organs form together a system called digestive system. So, now we are going to see what are the organs that is going to help for the digestion. Right? So, next one. So, first the di process of digestion starts in your mouth. Where? In your mouth. So, in the mouth you have a Teeth. So, the teeth grinds and chews the food into small pieces and while chewing what happens your mouth produces a liquid called saliva. What is this? Saliva. So, this saliva mixes with the blood and may, uh, with your uh, food. The saliva mixes with your food and makes it soft and moist and it helps in digestion. So, the food has to be soft, then only you can swallow it, right? So, this saliva mixed with the food and makes it soft and moist. So, next, uh, the food travels into your food pipe. So, after the food, so after the, from the mouth, the food travels into the, goes down into your food pipe. So, this is your food pipe. So, this food pipe is also called as esophagus. So, esophagus is also called as food pipe. Right? So, you have to spell esophagus. So, esophagus. Okay? So, esophagus is also called as food pipe where it reaches, the food reaches the stomach. So, in the, in the, upper end it connects with the mouth and in the lower end it is connected with the stomach right so then the food travels to your stomach so what is stomach stomach is nothing but your or sac like organ okay so this is your stomach so it is a sac like organ where you can see it is like a bag Right? So, a stomach also produces digestive juices. This digestive juices digest the food. The juice which also includes the HCL. What is that? HCL. So, that is why if we are, if we are, if we keep our empty, uh, stomach in an empty, what happens? This hydrochloric acid will make your lining of the stomach, there will be inflammations. So then, next liver. So liver produces a juice called bile. So what is it? Bile. So this bile is produced by the liver. So this is the liver. So the liver produces bile and the bile is stored in the gallbladder. So this is called gallbladder. So once the food comes here from the stomach, this gallbladder releases the bile and this bile digests the food, particularly your fat. So, your fat is di digested by the bile. Okay. So, then this bile first moves into your small intestine. So, once the food from the stomach reaches the small intestine, the bile 
mix with the food and digest the fat. So, after the stomach, the food reaches the small intestine. So, in the small intestine, digestive juices completely digest the food and then useful nutrients are absorbed. They are absorbed through the walls of the small intestine. So, this is your small intestine. In the walls of the small intestine, there will be small, small structures, small, minute structures. They are called as villi. So, what is this? Villi. So, th this is not given in your book. So, villi. So, this villi will absorb the nutrients present in the food and they will they are absorbed into the blood. So, they are absorbed into the blood and this blood carries these nutrients to all the parts of our body. So, small intestine has three sections, duodenum, jejunum and ileum. So, if you see the length of this small intestine, it is very long, right? So, that is why small intestine is the longest part of our digestive system because it is nearly 6 meter long. So, 1 meter is the length will be from our hand to your shoulder but 6 meters is just imagine how long your small intestine is and it is just coiled and it is present in our abdomen region right. So, after the small intestine the food travels into your So, the undigested food that cannot be digested passes into the large intestine. So, in the large intestine what happens? So, the food comes here. So, in the large intestine the food does not have nutrients because the nutrients are absorbed in your small intestine itself. So, the food will have only some water. So, this water is absorbed in the large intestine. And some, some useful nutrients like vitamin K, biotin are produced in the large intestine. So, this also absorbed in your large intestine, right? So, after that it forms a feces. What is this? Feces. So, feces are nothing but undigested waste materials. So, what are feces? So, feces are the undigested waste materials that are stored in your rectal region. So, what happens in the rectal region? So, the once the food is stored, uh, undigested waste food that is uh, waste materials are stored, they are say, excreted through the anus. So, anus is, passes the feces out of the body through the Anus. So, through the anus, the undigested waste materials are passed through the anus. So, your digestion process starts from your mouth till your anus, right? So, these are all the digest uh, organs that involve in digestion process, right? So, next we will see what are the healthy eating habits. So, we have to first thing we have to chew our food well. So, when you eat food, do not just swallow the food, chew the food well, right? And then you eat a balanced diet. So, you have to consume a diet which contains all the nutrients to stay healthy, right? And eat more fruits and vegetables. So, every day you have to eat more fruits and vegetables for your healthy digestion process and drink plenty of water. So, water helps in digestion. So, you have to drink more amount of water and wash your hands before and after meal. This is very, very important. So, you have to wash your hands before and after meal to avoid germs, right? So, now I told germs. What are germs? Germs are nothing but microbes. So, let us see about microbes. So, what is what are microbes? Microbes are nothing but germs. So, this microbes are tiny living things. They are tiny living things and they cannot be seen with our naked eye. You cannot just see with your eyes. It can be seen only under a microscope. So, this is microscope. So, only through this only you can see the microbes. 
okay so microscope is the instrument where we can see the microbes and this microbes are present everywhere right and there are microbes which are very harmful and there are some microbes which are very useful also okay so now we are going to see what are the microbes so there are four types of microbes bacteria fungi virus and protozoa first we will see about bacteria so bacteria causes diseases like typhoid and tuberculosis right so these are these are all the types of bacterial organisms right so next uh, we will see about fungi so fungi causes diseases like ringworm and athlete's foot what is ringworm so ringworm is nothing but so ringworm so ringworm is nothing but you can see a ring like uh, infection on the skin in tamil they used to say padai thamarai right and then athlete's foot athlete's foot or nothing but chethu punnu they used to say right so these are the diseases that are caused by fungal so next uh, we will see about virus so of course it is a familiar word for you right so this virus also causes diseases like polio and then common cold your common cold your cold is because of the viruses okay so these are all the different types of viruses that you can see and what is the recent virus yes of course it corona is also a virus right so next we are going to see about protozoa protozoa is also a microbe it is a germ that causes diseases so what are the diseases like malaria malaria and dysentery so you know malaria malaria is a type of fever that is caused by the mosquitoes bite of the mosquitoes and then dysentery dysentery is nothing but they used to say uh, um, loose motion they used to say right bedi they used to say right so that is because of the protozoa germ right so these are all the protozoans that causes diseases right so with this you are almost your lesson is over right now let's see your uses of microbes i already told you there are some microbes which are very harmful and some are very useful right so some microbes help us to turn the milk into curd so how you get curd yes so some microbes are useful in the formation of the curd and some microbes help us to make buns and breads so buns and breads also with the help of the microbes only and then some microbes help in decaying the plants and animals so if dead plants dead animals or that how it is decayed how it is destroyed in the soil with the help of the microbes only the microbes decays the uh, helps in decaying the pl dead plants and animals so microbes also help us in all the ways okay so with this you are almost your lesson is over so in this lesson you learnt about what is teeth what are the sets of teeth what are the types of teeth and also you learnt what how to take care of teeth to avoid in uh, the diseases and what are the steps that we can do to protect our teeth right and also we saw what is digestion and what are the organs that involved in the digestion process and each one by one organ we discussed and we learnt about the eating healthy eating habits and also you learnt about the microbes right so with this your lesson is over so go through the lesson again and again and you have to do the self assessment so the questions are given in the along with the video in the description link go through that take the self assessment read the lesson again and again and then you have to do the self assessment so that how far you have understood the lesson you can evaluate yourself right so do this at home don't waste your time so you learned something in this class you learned very useful informations right so with the next lesson i will meet you thank you to be from
Bharatidasana Medical Secondary School. We do have a nutrition department in our 